to another episode of Kev's Defender Project. Before we start, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody subscribed. We've got nearly 600 subscribers now, so um, I'll try and keep making good videos for you and you keep subscribing. And uh, secondly, apologies for the length of time it's taken to get this episode out, but um, as you can see from the bits of car behind me, I've been working on my other project, which is over there. Um, building a it's kind of a two-seater sports kit car type thing and I finished mocking it up so I've stripped everything off I've got to get the, sand, the frame to the sandblasters and then get it primed and painted so I can put everything back together so thanks for bearing with me and now on to today's project which is changing the ECU now the engine in the Land Rover originally had a Lucas 14 CUX uh, engine management computer which is a 30 year old piece of technology it's very robust but it allows limited ability to change the performance or the fuel economy on it basically the engine runs with a distributor which is driven directly by the engine so um, the timing is affected by something called vacuum advance we don't need to worry about any of that because the new one we've got drives off something called a trigger wheel so that's attached to the crankshaft so the computer knows at any time whereabouts the engine is in its cycle which allows it to, um, based on some software in the computer, decide when we're going to fire the spark which will give us either more performance, more fuel economy, um, that sort of thing. Now instead of having one coil and the distributor to fire the sparks, we've actually got these things called coil packs. So these are individual coils that go to each one of the spark plugs in each cylinder and they're fired two at a time, so it's called a wasted spark system, um, which allows us to keep the cost down. Now I mentioned a trigger wheel, um, and that's basically going to be attached to the car, so let's just switch to a piece I did earlier about how the trigger wheel works. Now probably the most involved part of this whole job is going to be fitting this, which is the trigger wheel. Now, as you can see, it's got well, 36 teeth, but there's one missing, so it's called a 36 to 1 missing tooth wheel. So there's one every 10 degrees. Now what happens when this is on the car, we fit this to the crankshaft, so as the engine goes round, this sensor here senses the teeth as they go past, and then it will notice when this one is not is missing, because there won't be a, a little spike in the signal. And that connects back to the ECU, and then so the ECU knows where something called top dead center is, which is where cylinder one, uh, the piston is at its highest position, and that's where we can drive everything else from in terms of the timing of the fuel and the spark and everything else. So what I need to do now is go and take the crank wheel off. So, here's my crank wheel. Um, you can see this is where the pulley goes. We've also got markings for the timing. Um, the T means top dead center, as we were talking about earlier on. Now, I set the engine to top dead center before I took this off for a very good reason. The crank wheel, I mean the trigger wheel, if you remember, we need to put the missing tooth five teeth ahead of top dead center. So basically what I need to do is figure out, when I put this bracket on, the timing cover and then bolt this bracket to it which has the sensor on. I need to know that when I put this wheel back on the missing tooth when I bolt it on is going to be five teeth ahead of top dead center. So what I need to do now is bolt this on, dry fit this, put like a pen mark or something on the wheel to say where the sensor is when it's at top dead center then we will take this back cover off and use those bolts to put the crank wheel back on. Sorry, trigger wheel. So um, let's go do that. That's the sensor mounted. Now 
I've put a mark on the crank wheel where the sensor goes and I've already taken the nuts and bolts off because nobody wants to stand and watch me watch, uh, I'm doing a bunch of nuts and bolts so we're just going to leave this um, cover thing cover plate off and then we're going to put the trigger wheel onto the crank wheel so if you remember that's my pen mark so that's where the sensor is at top dead center so the missing tooth needs to be one, two, three, four, five teeth ahead of top dead center. So now we know exactly where that is. We'll just clamp that on. And I just need to bolt that all back up again. So uh, come back in a minute when I've done all the nuts and bolts. <laughs> So now we've got the crank wheel back on, belt back on, the sensor set up, all ready to go. We can move on to the next stage, which is removing some of the parts we're not going to need anymore from the old ECU system and replacing them with the pieces for the new system. So the first one we're not going to need is the mass airflow sensor. The uh, Mega Squirt does it slightly differently with pressure sensor, so we can get rid of this big lump here. Next thing we can remove is this coil, the ignition module, and the distributor because the distributor used to be the thing that would send the signal to the coil to fire the spark. Now we're doing it with the trigger wheel, so we're doing it all electronically now. So we don't need these pieces anymore, so they can go. When I take the distributor out, there's gonna be a big hole in the engine. So I've got this thing. It's just basically a stub distributor. It sits in the hole and uh, does nothing because there's nothing for it to do. Uh, once we've done that, we can put the wiring loom in um, and then start hooking up some of the bits that are on there. Now, it's starting to get dark, so I think I'm gonna finish for today, but I have managed to get quite a lot done. Now, you'll see that I've got the old wiring loom, the distributor, the computer, and the airflow and the coil. All those are out, so um, I can, they can go to a good home. I have got the new wiring loom in. Um, you can see it's all, all the things that had plugs on are actually plugged in. The only thing I've got left to do in here is wire up the throttle sensor so that the computer knows how hard I'm pressing the pot, uh, the pedal. Um, I've got to wire in or create the spark leads for the coils and mount those. I think I'm probably going to mount those over the back there uh, on a plate or something. And you can also see now it's not tidy, but um, I've got the computer wired in. I've got it connected up to my laptop and I've tested that it will actually talk to the software. So I'm not gonna put anything in its final place until I'm sure that everything works, which is why um, it's all looking a bit untidy. I've got some of these temporary connectors, um, but yeah, I've just got a couple of jobs to do tomorrow and then we can see if we can get this thing started. Right, so the next job is HT leads, or spark plug leads. So I've got some cable here, which 8mm HT cable. I've got the connector that go, is going to go to the spark plug. I've also got the boot and the connector for the coil end. Now, first thing to do, silicon spray. Very important, because we're going to be sliding this rubber thing against this rubber thing, and they don't like sliding against each other. So. A nice coating of silicon spray should help it slide on really nicely. Easy to forget this um, and then you're in trouble because you're going to have to either slide it all the way down the wire or take the end off and start again which is no good for anyone really. Next step is to trim the end. Now this little handy little crimper that I've got uh, which is for the spark plug end has got two little trimmers on it one for 8mm cable one for 8.5mm cable so this is 8mm so what I'm going to do here is you put it in to the end put a knife down out until it gets to the flat bit and then just twist the cable and that should cut it all the way through I'm going to take it out 
and then the end slides off. So we don't need that bit. And then there's some uh, little bits of fibre running through. So we just trim those off. And we're left with the lead with the, the conductor ready to go on to the end piece. So for this end, it's going to be this piece, which is for the coil end. So what we need to do is fold the conductor over so it's going to be nicely contacting whatever happens. And then before we crimp it, I'm just going to shape it ever so slightly with a pair of pliers. It starts the starts the crimp piece going in the circle that it's going to be going in. Next step is to put it into the uh, crimper. So I've got a nice hydraulic crimper. Uh, if I put it in that way around, this is quite difficult to do because you need to hold three things with two hands. And then crimp that. And there we have the end crimped on nicely. Now if you see some of this plastic is sticking out, uh, trim some of that off. Then this white plastic thing slides on over the connector so that it just goes there at the end and then pull the boot down. That's one end done. So now what I need to do is go and figure out how long this needs to be. So I'm going to go and offer it up to the car and I'll be back in a second. Now we don't want to make these videos too long and um, we've done pretty well. We've got the trigger wheel fitted and the sensor. We started on the HT leads, um, so why don't we take a break. I'll measure up for the HT leads. When we come back, we'll finish the HT leads off. We will fit the wiring loom and the O2 sensor and then we'll see what we can do about getting this started. So I'll see you in part two.